everyone, and welcome to Marketing and Sales Over Cocktails, the weekly podcast that helps you grow your business, improve your life, and enjoy yourself along the way. I'm your host, Alan Langer, and every week we try to bring you the best thought leaders, the best business leaders, and the best minds out there to help you succeed in business and in life. So sit back, relax, grab your pad, your pen, and your favorite beverage, and enjoy the next episode of Marketing and Sales Over Cocktails. Hey everyone, Alan Langer here and welcome to Marketing and Sales Over Cocktails. This is episode number four. And just like the previous three episodes, I'm really excited about my guest tonight. I just keep getting better guest after better guest. And tonight I'm really hitting it out of the park. I've got Alex Sheridan with us, Alex B. Sheridan as his LinkedIn LinkedIn fame. And uh, I'm going to give you a quick introduction, but this guy, pay attention on this podcast because he's going to help you scale your business. He's going to help you become a superstar on LinkedIn, just with some tips he's going to give you tonight. And I met him on LinkedIn just because of what he does. And his videos are just awesome and they get your attention and that's kind of what he does so uh alex is he, he, his it's uh what, what's the, alex let me introduce you and then i'll you know, kind of do a bio so what's the name of your company again so impacts impacts i-m-p-a-x-s right correct yep okay so alex helps everyone on linkedin with their video content basically but not only the content he helps you get clients through the video content so Again, his videos are awesome. Look him up on LinkedIn. The first thing you do after you listen to this podcast. But Alex, tell us a little bit about that, how you do that, what, what you, what you kind of help people with, and then how you, kind of how you got there too. Yeah. So sh- the, the short and, and super sweet uh, version of this is I turn executives, leaders, business owners, founders into LinkedIn video content creators that generate revenue for their business. How I got into it, I, you know, I've been in sales and marketing for quite some time. And last year, I uh, decided to start my own business. I always had that kind of entrepreneurial spirit, the fire inside of me. I always wanted to help other people grow their businesses. And so I started making content and, and it didn't work. <laughs> it, wasn't, it didn't get me results. You know? It wasn't bringing in customers. I wasn't building my brand like I thought I was. And so I literally dedicated my entire life to figuring this out. And you flash forward to now, and that's what I help people do is figure out that, so that, that problem, help them solve that riddle. So you've got a lot of people kind of like we were talking earlier that are on LinkedIn, but they're not getting any results. You know, they're not generating leads. They're not generating customers. They're not building their brand like they thought they would. And there's a lot of different avenues. There's a lot of different reasons why it's not happening. I help people figure that out and then transform them into somebody that does create the type of content that generates revenue for their business. Well, that, that's, you know, what you're saying right there is so true. I think so many people know, at least, at least the people that have, you know, some sort of drive and they want to be better. They know that being on LinkedIn is important. They know that, all right, I got to post, I got to, I got to post content. Everything I read means I got to post, I got to engage, but then you're right. Then, then what do I do? Like I'm doing it, I'm posting yeah. and nothing's happening. You kind of take them to the next step. Like you figure out what's wrong and why it's not happening, right? Exactly. So it would be like going to the gym every day, right? And and you're showing up to the gym. You're like, I'm here. I'm going to the gym, right? (laughs) I'm I'm actually by the weights. I'm picking up some weights. I'm doing a couple things. But let's say you don't have any type of clue as to what you're doing in terms of how to get in shape or how to accomplish your goals. Maybe it's you want the abs or whatever it is. You don't know that. And then also you don't understand what kind of food you need to eat. You know, what type of protein, what type of veg, you know, uh, the different diet regimens that you would need to be on to achieve your fitness goal. And so you're kind of going through the motions and you're like, oh man, I'm still not really in really good shape. Well, it's like, well, you, you, there's something missing. There's something that you're not doing at the gym or there's something and, or there's something that you're not doing from an eating standpoint. Usually, yes. it's, usually it's eating in, in, in most cases, but, <laughs> but, um, but that's how it works in LinkedIn. That's how it works in, in business and sales and leadership. There's gaps and it's just a matter of, Step one is saying, hey, there is a gap. I understand there's a gap and I want to fix it because I see the opportunity. And two, how am I going to go about making sure that we turn this thing around? And, and we start getting some, getting the ROI out of your time. I mean, who wants to spend time on LinkedIn every single day? Who wants to spend time at the gym every single day? And you're not getting results. That's, oh, that's yeah. the whole point. And I, and I talk to a lot of people and they're like, well, I'm not here to build relationships. I'm not here to build connections. I want to learn. Cool. I want to do all that stuff too. And I do do all that stuff. 
But guess what happens? Guess what increases when you actually get more intentional and you start growing your business on LinkedIn? You increase your connections, you increase your relationships, you increase the amount of things that you learn. And so everything kind of rises when you get really intentional about how you spend your time on LinkedIn. Yeah. And, and it's, it's, um, it's, it's like, uh, it's the same thing in sales. You know, it's like you can follow, you can follow the, the sales pitch that is trained and, and kind of just do, you know, float. But if you don't have any intention of, of becoming better and figuring that stuff out, you know, when, when I was a young sales rep and I just followed sales pitches that were trained, I was a 30% closer, just like everyone else's because they train you to be 30% closer. But I, I was like, there's, there's something wrong here. And, you know, I figured it out and, you know, I last 20 years of my career, I was a 65% closer and everyone yeah. else was at 30. So you're right. You, you, totally. So I, I know exactly what you're talking about. And I think a lot of people that are going to be listening to this are going to be like, whoa, I, 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 I want to do this. I, I really want to take this to the next level. So. Well, it, it, real quickly, it's kind of like yeah. that. You, you've heard that saying where it's like, hey, I've been rich and I've been poor and I'll choose poor or I'll choose rich every single time. Have you heard right. this? it's definitely in Wolf of Wall Street. There's something along the lines where he says, hey, yeah. I've been rich, I've been poor, and I'll choose for the rich every single time. And it's, <laughs> it's, the same thing with, it's the same thing with LinkedIn. I'm not trying to talk about money right now, but I'm just talking about LinkedIn. I, I personally have been on LinkedIn and not seen, been poor, not seeing results. And then yep. I've been rich in terms of making it work, obviously not talking about just money, but like making it work. And I'll choose making it work every single time. Not. That's it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Well, why would you not? <laughs> right. Yeah. So without giving away the, 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 you know, the store and I know, I know you're, you're, a, you're, a, you're not only a content guy, but you're a value guy. I know that I, it, I, I learned a couple of years ago that, you know, people are so afraid to give away information, to give away, you know, their stuff. They think I don't want to give away my secrets, but yeah. if you actually provide value, you, you're going to be, you're not only going to, make more connections and, 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 and have those connections be more important, but you're going you're gonna to make more money because you're giving people something rather than trying to keep it all to yourself and then say, hey, hire me and I'll teach it to you. I'm, I'm from the boat, like, give out your knowledge and then you'll, you'll just get more, right? A hundred percent, man. People have that scarcity mentality where it's like, oh, I got I to gotta hoard the information and hoard the secrets because and, and, I, you know, I need to sell them my program or whatever it is. The reality is, when people usually when they buy from you, they're buying context anyways. Like I can give away free tips. Does that mean you can go and do what I did over the last 12 months that I spent, you know, every, every day, 16 hours at, of course right. not. Right. Like, right. like right. I can give you some tips so you can put into action right away, but right. you can't turn around and just do what I can do. Just like the, the same thing in sales. Or if you're giving somebody tips on how to build a house, you can maybe right. hang up some things or, or do some drywall, but you can't build a whole house. Right. right. But who are you going to go to? But who are you going to go to now? When you need someone to build your house, are you going to go right. to the person that kept quiet and never said anything? Or are you going to go to Ronnie who was always giving you awesome tips on home improvement and how to, and how to build things and how to add things to your house? It's yep. a no brainer. So people are, are, they're mispositioning themselves because they're scared to give out tips, strategies, and content because they want to monetize. They want to sell it. When in reality, this is a game about give, 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 mm -hmm. and then you receive. This, this, is, this is totally about giving more than you receive and you will end up receiving a ton. And to that, to that end, it drives me crazy. And I'm sure you can probably agree with me, but maybe not. When I get a, when I get a connection request that goes right into a sales pitch, yeah, like, Hey, connect with me and let's set up a, let, let, let's set up a meeting to talk. Well, <laughs> I don't even know who the hell you are terrible, <laughs> and you're, and you're trying to sell me something in four sentences. What are you doing? It's, t it's terrible. So right? one, you would never do that in real life. I mean, you know, sales, right? You're the expert. You would never come up to a, roll up in a sales meeting and be like, Hey, so here's my product. Here's what I do. And then let's, you know, let's get to work right now. You right. Would engage with that person. You would, you would talk to them like a regular human being would. And then maybe you would start some dialogue where you would uncover some issues. You would uncover some, some desires that they have or problems that they're trying to work through. And you'd figure out, Hey, are we a good fit? Does this make sense to work together? Right. It's the right. same thing. The other thing is people aren't on link. This isn't Amazon. Like people aren't on LinkedIn to freaking buy. They don't, right. they don't <laughs> click on LinkedIn to, to literally like, I'm going to go click on LinkedIn to go buy something right now. Let me, let, I'm super pumped for the next 20 sales pitches that I'm going to get my DMs. Like nobody is logging on LinkedIn to do that. They're coming on here. You know, there's a lot of different reasons. One, they're trying to, you know, grow their business. They may be trying to find a job, find a candidate, what it, or consume valuable content, learn some things. Right. 
Right. Those are the reasons that people are on here. So what you have to do is position yourself to your target audience as somebody that, that is interesting, that brings value, that they would want, that, that you position yourself where you're worth following. And then that leads to the leads, that leads to the business, that leads to the relationships. Everything else falls into place when you do that. Okay, so you said target audience. So how do you find your target audience? What, what do you do? Do you just do a search for the, the titles of the people that you want to deal with? Or is there, a, is there something else to be thinking about when you're looking for your target audience? So there's a couple of different things. One, if you've got regular, just basic LinkedIn, no LinkedIn, you know, sales navigator or LinkedIn premium, a basic search. Yeah. The best thing to do is typically you're looking for a certain type of, of demographic, whether let's just say, for example, you're targeting CEOs, founders, executives, that kind of stuff. Right. All you do is you plug in that job title in the certain search criteria and you can drill it down by industry. If you're targeting, let's say the tech industry or the staffing and recruiting industry or whatever you're targeting, you would filter it down by that. And then you simply can go through and start connecting with those people. The, the, the mistake that people make is one, they don't do that enough. You know, you yeah. got to connect with your target audience a lot every day. Mm-hmm. And then, and then secondly, once you do connect with that, those folks, you need to do something with it. You know, that's when you hit them up with a video DM and, and you engage with them. You don't pitch, but you just engage with them and you personalize it. And so most people forget that they're connecting with people or they get the, you know, those things that pop up that, that recommend, they recommend you connect and stuff. And it just pops up on your thing. And you're like, cool, this is easy. I hit connect and I'm done. Well, that's what I, I also teach is you got to have an operating rhythm around your LinkedIn. You know, because if you're connecting with all these people and then you're never sending anything out to them, it's just like people walking up to your business and you're like, hey, and then they, they walk away and you don't engage, <laughs> and you don't engage with them. It's like, it's like, oh, like I, my video on Friday, I, this is what I'm talking about. I'm like, dude, people aren't utilizing the likes and comments. They get likes and they get comments and they're not doing anything with them. It's like setting up a stand at the mall and people roll up to you and they're like, dude, awesome product. Love that. Like that. That's awesome. Hey, nice job on that. And then you're like, Thanks. <laughs> Have a great day. You know, like, like those are those are outside of the warm DMs that come into you, which do happen when you create good content. Warm uh, DMs, people reach out to you because they saw one of your videos or a piece of content. That those are the best. But the second best is those likes and comments because they're already warmed up. They right. already know you, so you start off the conversation with just saying, "Hey, thank you so much for watching the video. Appreciate right. it. Glad you liked it. Thanks for the feedback. By the way, I saw you were creating some videos too." I'm, I'm, you know, I'd love to talk to you about some, some free tips, some tricks that I could give you on how to really up your engagement. That, that's and, it. And what you said there is, is pure goal is like, yes, you can, you can leave a note. You can write a type of little note, say thanks, but, but doing the video um, message instead of typing a message or even I had Sam Downs on the, co- on the podcast, uh, two or three podcasts ago, and she's like, she always does the voice message. And I ne- literally never thought about doing that. I knew it was there. I'm like, I'm just going to type, hey, thanks for connecting. And I started doing that. And it's amazing how much, how much people not only like it, but they respond to it. And then with you, you left me a video you know, message saying, hey, thanks for the connection. And I videoed you back. So if you can, the people are listening, don't just send a note, send a voice message or a video message uh, after the connection, right? A hundred percent. It's all about how do you like you know, everyone's kind of fighting obscurity in the beginning, especially in the beginning, but really always you're fighting obscurity. You're trying to get known. Like you may have the best product in the world, but if you don't get known, if you don't get out there and say, Hey, this is me, no one's going to buy from you. So the first step is how do you separate yourself from everyone else? Well, I can tell you this, 99% of people are not sending video DMs, probably 99.000. You know, it's probably, yeah. it's probably yeah. a higher number that are not sending video DMs. So if you're the one person that they've got a video DM from in the last 30 days or 60 days, instantly you're at the top of the pile. Now, yeah. as long as your messaging is pretty good and you're not overly pitchy, the right. response rate is incredible from a video. So yeah, hundred percent, I would recommend doing videos all day, every day. You've got to find a way to stand out from the back. And speaking of videos, and this is, this is my little tip. Uh, have you ever heard of, Lo- of Loom or, yeah, or I have, uh, yeah. Bomb Bomb? Yeah, Loom I have, yeah. Yeah, so for those who don't know what Loom is, it's a video in an email. So instead mm-hmm. of responding to an email, hey, thanks for the email, you do a little video and the video goes in the email instead. Amazing response rate. Like mm-hmm. people love it. They eat it up. So the video stuff, you know, is, is you got to be doing it. You just have to. Well, it's an opportunity. Just to, it's a different interaction when you see someone's face and yeah. you smile and you're yourself and you have fun with it. And it's just, it's just I mean, you and nobody would choose if you're walking into a deal 
a business deal or a, a relationship, whatever it is, nobody would choose. Let's sit and write some stuff out back and forth to each other. <laughs> Every, everyone would say, is there a way we could meet? We could get face to face, you know, like, like, no, like if you just think about it, it, it's so funny, man. But you know, what's funny is like, this is even funnier is like, I, I preach video DMS and obviously I preach video content because I, I, I seen it. I, I lived, I've lived it. You know, I, I get it. And I, I preach video DMS all day, every day. I talk about them all the time. Yet, yet still 99% of the people do not use them. And it's, yeah. and a lot of times it's because they're, it's just uncomfortable for them. Right. Yes. The same yes. way like video contests, like, ah, I don't know if I want to put myself out there, which I get it, but it's like, you know, Hey, you're uncomfortable. You don't want to try something new, even though this is where the times are heading. This is, the, this is where we're going, especially yeah. with COVID. So it's like, cool. You're not comfortable, you know, doing video and upping your game and adding new skills, but are you cool not having a business in three years because you're not <laughs> relevant and you have no brand and you haven't evolved with the times? Because if you don't, if you don't adjust over time, time adjusts you. That's and just, and that's just then it. you're going to be working at the kiosk in the mall and people are going to be handing you likes on a piece of paper and they'll be walking yeah. on by. <laughs> and, it's, and guess what? It's not, and guess what? It's not going to be comfortable at first. Like this is where people are like, I don't, I, I just feel kind of weird on camera. I, you know what? I even like when I'm texting people, I'll do a lot of the voice text. I don't know yeah. if you mess with that. You can yeah. do an audio message. Yeah. You'd be stunned how many people don't even, people that I know, they are literally scared to send an audio back. It's <laughs> weird for them. And I'm like, why can't you send me an audio? And they're like, I just don't want to, you know, and I'm like, but here's the thing, dude, you, nothing is comfortable in the beginning. We, nope. When you first started, when you learned how to walk, it wasn't comfortable. You, you didn't, you didn't start up and just boom, you started walking day one, you're good to go. You right. started crawling, you stood up, you stumbled around half a million times and then eventually you learned to walk. But it, because it got, it, it, not that it got easier, you just got better over time. But what right. you didn't do is you didn't give up after you can walk a couple of times. You didn't say, you know what, screw this walking thing. I'm just going <laughs> to, I'm, I'm just going to crawl the rest of my life. I'll go, you know, I'll be 55 and still, I'm still crawling. Um, so it's about, you have to push through that. I get it. Self doubt. We all have it. Insecurities. We all have it. I have it. I totally get it. But you have to fight through it. You have to fight through it because if you're not evolving, if you're not getting better, you will get swept up in the times. And there's no better time now than to take advantage of this opportunity, LinkedIn, video, all this stuff. And you know what? I think the perfect analogy right now because of COVID is, you know, three months ago, no one knew what, knew what the hell they were doing on Zoom, right? Nope. I, 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 I was on four Zoom calls my whole life and all of a sudden, boom, I'm starting a Zoom video, you know, virtual networking group on Fridays. I'm like, yeah, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> and now 14 but, weeks later, it's really pretty freaking good. And you're a great example of someone that's evolving. You had to adapt. Yeah. What are you going to do? Wait around for freaking, you know, people to open up public speaking again. Who knows right. if that's, who knows what that's going to look like again? You know, exactly. hopefully it comes back. I would love to speak on stage personally. I would absolutely love that. Yeah. And you'd but, be, you'd, you'd be great at it too. But well, thanks. But, but, um, who knows? I'm sure at some point it'll, it'll open back up. It'll look a little bit different with six feet and stuff. But, but this is an opportunity to speak to the world because you, there's no limitations. I don't need to pack people in. People can see my videos no matter where they're at, no matter what time. Yep. They can see it an hour after I posted it, three hours. So you have an opportunity to speak to the world and tell your unique story and, and, and impact a ton of people's lives. And it, it's a free platform. <laughs> It's, it's free, right? It's and, cost you know, the, you anything. It's the best marketing tool of all time. <laughs> all you got to do is have a good strategy and you can literally build your business off of LinkedIn. That's what I have done. I'm incredibly passionate about this. It's crazy, I, man. I, I you are just passion. literally watching opportunity pass by. Yeah. I mean, and it's just, yeah, it's, it's crazy stuff. So I want to, I want to um, go back a second because you mentioned something, you're putting yourself out there and I've talked to, talked to this, talked about this to a few people. I've had, I had Brittany Droz on last, uh, last week. She's an entrepreneur coach and she talks about this a lot. Like putting yourself out there is so important, but also how you handle your detractors. Like you put out some, you put out some really great video content, but I also can see that you could piss some people off when like the last one you did on Friday was like, Hey, everybody, your video suck pretty much is what you said, which was great. Cause then at the, you know, in the middle of it, you said, I really want to help you. That's why I'm telling you this. So, but when you get a detractor, when you get someone who says, hey, I don't like what you're saying or whatever this person will say, how do you handle that? So this, this may surprise you and this is no joke and I have no problem. You don't problem. get any, right? <laughs> well, I, I, and I would have no problem saying if I did. I, I literally, as far as I can remember, out of posting content consistently every single week on LinkedIn the past eight to whatever months it's been, 
there's three people. And I, I remember exactly what they said. One of them was on the Wolf of Wall Street and they were like, this is blasphemy or Wolf of LinkedIn. I did a video called the Wolf of LinkedIn a while back. <laughs> and, and it was, you know, it's funny, but it was also like, there was some value in it. And they were talking about, this is blasphemy. This shouldn't be on LinkedIn. And then, and then his buddy chimed in. That was two. And then the other one was more recently where the guy was like, he didn't say anything crazy bad. He was just like, are you, are you kidding me with this? And that was his comment. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> and, and, and you know, what's funny. And here's, what's really funny, dude. So I always like one in general, when people hate on you, I, for no reason, I know that they're insecure inside. I know that yes. they've got something inside. So I try to have empathy and say, you know what? Maybe they've got something going on where they're taking it out on other people. Cause something internally, I would never just hate on somebody for no reason. We right. can disagree and whatnot, but just to hate on people, to hate on people, that's right. not you. That's not a you problem. That's a them problem. Absolutely. You know, they got to figure out whatever they have going on internally. They're not happy and they need to deal with it. They're taking it out on you. But what I did with that guy who said, are you kidding me? You know, yeah. I looked at his profile. I didn't, first of all, I don't respond because I don't even right. give the time of day. If I did, I'd be like, thanks for the engagement, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and, um, so I'd be, thanks for boosting my profile. But I went to his profile and I went to his activity just for the hell of it. I'm like, let me see what this guy's about. I'm very curious. Went to his activity. I, and you can see if it's a public profile, you can see exactly. I can go back and see what you liked, what you commented on. Yeah. Everything public if your profile's there. I go back. His last three comments were on girls' videos. And he was making not inappropriate comments, but like, you're cute. Like, like kind for LinkedIn, it was inappropriate, right? Oh, my and God. And so I'm like, this Seriously. guy is a freak. And he called me out for doing some kind of funny video. And, and he's sitting there commenting on, on girls' pro, on girls videos that are you know, attractive <laughs> girls. And, and he's literally dropping like, wow, you're so cute and stuff. And I'm like, this is, this is the guy? <laughs> like, like, this is the like. <laughs> Like, oh my you, God. It's all standards from, you know? So again, <laughs> I, dude, I honestly, I mean, and the amount of positive stuff so outweighs it that I wouldn't, yeah. unless, unless you ask me that question, doesn't even cross my mind. Doesn't yeah. even, I wonder sometimes what I'm doing, if it's going to, you know, be a, a great post or not, or how many leads I'm going to, I think about that. How is it going to hit my target audience? Are they going to resonate with? Like, I think about that stuff, but dude, haters are haters. You're going to have haters. And the bigger yep. I get, the more haters I'll probably have. And that's good. You you don't want everyone, you know, you want a thousand percent of people agreeing with you anyway. You need some sort of, uh, and the other thing that I I can always sleep good on, man, I can sleep well at night because I know I'm a good person. I know I'm doing the right thing. I know I'm genuinely helping people. If people want to talk to me, I give them the time of day. I'm a very real down to earth person. And I, that's, that's it. I mean, I'm good with myself. So I don't, I, I, whatever you want to say about me is whatever you want to say about me, but you don't, if you don't know me, then, how, then what does it really mean to me? You know, yeah. I'm not going to let you take over real estate in my head in my, in my, my mental game because you're insecure and you want to take it out of me. And that's not going to happen. Too many, by, too many things to accomplish to worry about that. By the way, to show you, show you Alex's work ethic, I'm having vodka right now and he's having water because he said he still has to do some work after we're talking. Oh, it's still got about three to four hours. To put it. Let's, go. <laughs> Let's go. Well, I have three to four hours too, but I'm going to have some vodka. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. So I, 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 before we start wrapping up here, because this has been awesome, I could talk to you for two hours. Every time, not every time, but when you post, your videos are always right there. Is there something that, that you're doing that just makes me find you all the time? Or is it just because you post a lot? Like, how do, how do, like if I post yeah. a video, yeah. how do I know that you so, see it or you know, the, the people that I have see it? So you're saying, how, do, how does my videos show yeah, up? You, you're, you're always coming up. Like, yeah, I don't think yeah, I miss a video right. when you post it. And yep. there are other people that post so, videos and I know I never see them. Yeah. So I know a guy on LinkedIn that puts <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm not, no, I'm kidding. Yeah, right. right. I, he puts me at the top of the list. And, the uh, and, and everyone, yeah, that'd be great, right? No, what happens? So this is how the algorithm works. When, okay. when you engage with other people, you you're, are now, you know, two to three to four or five times more likely to show up in their feed. So you've engaged with my post. You've liked yes. them, commented. I think I've engaged with some of your stuff. So when I post, because of if mine's gaining traction, you know, LinkedIn basically in the first hour, this is how the algorithm works. The first hour, you know, they've, they've got this, they've got people that look, that curate the content too, but a lot of it is, is through automation and they have these, these uh, algorithm type formulas that they use to figure out, okay, which post do we want to promote? Because they can't go through every post manually and say, which ones we want to no. show to a lot of people, which ones we don't. Right. But what they basically do in the first hour is they show it to your first degree connections. And if it gets good engagement, if people like it, they comment, they start to see there's conversations going, they pump it out to more people. If that goes oh, well, they start pumping it out to your second degree, your third degree connections. 
And then at that point, it could be a viral video. So which is why it's so important to build relationships and to make sure that your videos pop within that first hour, because that's kind of that's kind of sets the tone for the performance of the video. But but the reason I pop up on yours is because you've engaged with me before. And so LinkedIn's saying, oh, you're someone that that when I post before, you've liked it, you've commented, you must like my content. I want to keep you, I want to keep Alan on LinkedIn. If I'm LinkedIn thinking right now, I need to keep you on. So what better way can I keep Alan on than to show you posts that you've liked in the past or people that you've commented? Because I know that's naturally, that's what you like, right? You commented on it. So I'm going to show you more of that stuff so that you stay on LinkedIn and LinkedIn keeps generating money, you know? Ah, gotcha. Okay. I got it. That makes sense now. Mm Mm-hmm. So that's why you're not seeing my stuff because you don't even like my stuff. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, you know, obviously it gets like when you start, you know, one, you can only engage with so many people per day, right? Yeah. So if, like if I'm not, if we're, if we're not engaging, then I'm not, I'm not going to see your posts, you know? Yes. But two, I, I really, like I try my best. Sometimes I feel like I have to go out of my way because I'll see somebody and be like, man, I haven't seen their post in a long time. Why isn't it showing up in my feed? You right, know? Right. So, and so I'll go to their profile and then I'll just literally like find one of their posts and engage with it. So there may be times when you miss mine too, but. Oh, so, so if I don't see like, like, for example, we mentioned Sam Downs before Sam's is, is she, she's a great LinkedIn yeah. uh, top yeah, voice, no, no. I think of 2019. I used to see her post all the time and now I have, and then, and I kind of DM'd her the other day and she's like, oh, I haven't been posting a lot recently. So I'm like, oh, okay. That's what's going on. I was like, but you're right. I'm like, why haven't I been seeing her posts? Mm-hmm. It kind of dawns on me when you don't see the person you see yes. consistently. So yeah, cool stuff. All right. Well, two final things. One, one I'm going to have you plug yourself a little bit, but if, if people are listening to this, they're on LinkedIn, you know, whether they're a newbie or whether they've been, you know, dog paddling for the last two years and not getting anywhere, give them a piece of advice right now, if, you know, to end, to end, you know, your, your evening here on this podcast. So it, it, it's just a hundred percent, not about you. It's about the people that you're going to serve on LinkedIn. That's the biggest piece of advice I could give that, that you have to make it about your target audience. You have to make it about bringing value to them consistently. That that goes for your profile, your headline. When people land on your profile, does it speak to your target audience? Do you get them to really feel it when they land on it? Or are you talking about, hey, this is how hard I'm working. This is how long I've been around. This is my company. You're talking in the third person. You know, that's the stuff you want to avoid. You want to make yeah. people feel it. And the same thing with your content. You know, you have to put out stuff that that gives a lot of value to the people that you want to attract. And to take it a step further. You have to go out and engage with those people that you want to attract. So if I could sum it up, it's just, again, it's give more than you receive and have a strategy behind it and, and you're going to see results. Awesome. All right. So how do people find the great Alex B. Sheridan if they want to uh, you know, learn how to do all this stuff? What are, where are they going? I, I, am on, I am on LinkedIn. Oh, you're on LinkedIn, really? I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just got on. I don't know. It's a good platform? I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm on LinkedIn, you know, probably four trillion hours a day. So feel free to (laughs) to, to shoot me a DM and uh, I'd be happy to chat it up with anybody. Awesome. Well, Alex, uh, this has been amazing. And like, uh, like I expected, and again, we could talk for hours, but maybe I'll have you on, uh, you know, in in, in a few months and we can, we can talk about how I've I've improved my game because I'm definitely going to engage with you with, with that. So thank you very much. Sorry. I appreciate it. I'm glad you enjoyed your water and uh, (laughs) we will talk soon. This is Alan Langer from the Seven Secrets Center for Sales and Marketing. Thank you for joining Marketing and Sales Over Cocktails, and we will see you next time. Take care.